Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in. So on today's video, we are doing the mods to the Troxus Lynx. So big shout out to Troxus for providing us with this bike. You can check out the bike in the link below. First thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna pull off the wheel and start doing the modifications to the wheel. So we are replacing the tires. So we're gonna pull off the tire and then we are opening up the motor and getting right in there. So first we're gonna pop off the disc and then we're gonna pull out the motor core entirely. So with this motor, we're going to be doing regenerative braking and then we're also gonna be putting ATF or automatic transmission fluid into the motor to really help with cooling. So now that we have the motor core out, you can take a look at this gear and clutch assembly and we got that keyed shaft. So the original clutch, of course, is a freewheeling clutch. And the reason that they do this is so that you don't experience motor drag when you're not pedaling. This is really good uh, for helping it feel easier to pedal if the motor is not on, if your battery is dead or something like that. But obviously this doesn't work with the regenerative braking setup. So in order to make that clutch non-freewheeling we have to weld it shut so here you can see we're welding it shut i'm just using a harbor freight flux core welder it gets the job done and we tested it out and uh those welds never broke so it doesn't take an expensive high-end welder like a tig welder or anything like that in order to weld that clutch shut next thing that we're going to do is we're going to try to lock the shaft with the original clutch and to do that, we're gonna be using this permanent Loctite. This is Loctite Red. And the idea here is that that key shaft, there's a little bit of play between where the key shaft locks in. And so normally in a non-regenerative setup, you don't really notice it because torque is only being transmitted one way. But with a regenerative braking setup, you have a forward torque to propel the bike and then you have a reverse torque to act as braking. And so that back and forth action, you feel some lash in the motor. And watching one of the Grin Technologies videos, this was one of the ways that they helped keep that shaft locked in place. So this was our attempt. And what we found was that it worked for a little bit but it didn't work that great. So this might be uh, a way to do it, but you might actually have to weld it shut if you don't want any of that lash at all, or maybe one of our viewers can chime in on what would be a better method. So next thing is this black, ultra black gasket maker. This is what we use to seal up the motor because of course, when we're putting in automatic transmission fluid, that stuff is gonna probably wanna come out um, of the orifices or of the cable exit. So first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to seal in the one side of the axle. So we use a layer of that gasket maker and then we put a hot glare glue, sorry, a hot glue layer above that. And so this is sort of our O-ring that we're trying to have locked on to the axle. And now we spin it and so we can see that this allows the axle to spin freely. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to scratch up the surface where this freewheel is, and that's going to give it a more porous surface. So we just use a really cheap scratching tool. It's called a micro engraver. You can find them at Harbor Freight or Princess Auto. And then we're using this black gasket maker, and we're going to combine the first or original O-ring and that surface. So the automatic transmission fluid that we're putting in, we're only putting in about 100 milliliters. And that was what we had read online on Endless Sphere is a good amount. And then we're using that gasket maker and we're gonna go all around the motor plate cover to really seal it in. Now you notice that we put the motor gasket sealer or the gasket stuff into a syringe and this just makes it way easier to apply because that original bottle in a caulking gun the stuff shoots out and it's very messy and it's very uh, hard to wield and this stuff is like once it gets into your clothes it is a pretty bad stain so putting in the syringe makes it way easier and way more controlled to put in so as you can see when these bolts start to get tightened 
you can see the gasket maker start to ooze out all around the sides and that's a good sign and that should be even all the way across that's how you know that it is fully sealed in so now we're going to do one more layer of the gasket maker on the other side of the shaft and very importantly we're going to put it all around the cable exit because that tends to be where it wants to come out the most and every time that we did this we let the motor stay for about a day for that stuff to harden. Now we're gonna throw on these nice tires. These are, these are Shinko SR241 tires. And the key with installing a 16 inch motorcycle tire on a 20 inch rim is lubrication. So we used um, a product called Tire Slick, which makes it really easy, but you can even use dish soap. So we're gonna do the front wheel, same process install or put some of that tire slick all around the bead and that just makes it slide right on if you notice i don't even have to use a tire iron uh, everything was able to be done by hand and put some air in we'll throw that tire back on the bike and we've got some motorcycle tires on our e-bike now which makes a huge difference just in how safe you feel on the bike when you're riding these are dot approved which means that they're rated up to 150 kilometers per hour now we're not going to be going that fast but that's just nice to know and then we're throwing the rear wheel back in place and we've got our wheels all set so next thing we're going to be looking at is the battery so we have a 48 volt battery and we're going to be using a 24 volt battery in series in order to get to 72 volts so that was a look at the design of the battery and then what we did here was we glued all of the cells together um, but we added an extra layer of heat shrink tubing around each cell so each cell has two layers of heat shrink tubing around them and then we added an extra paper gasket onto the positive anodes or the positive parts of the cells and then we glue them together using a low temperature hot melt glue uh, the product is called, I believe it's called True Cool, and you can buy it on Amazon. So then we wrap up the battery with Kapton tape. Kapton is a high heat uh, resistant tape, and then we use fish paper all around the battery, and then we put some tabs so that we can solder our balance leads from our BMS. So here you can see Samil is installing the battery negative wire and we're trying to cover as much surface area as we can so that all of the cells are drawn evenly so we have four cells here each cell can do 10 amps continuous that's allowing this 24 volt battery to do 40 amps and then our original battery can also do 40 amps and that's going to give us 72 volts 40 amps which is 2880 watts so that's very close to our 3000 watt target and I'll let Samil throw on all these balance leads. The idea here is to do minimal crossovers, but every time there is a crossover, adding an extra layer of protection. In this case, we're using Kapton tape uh, at the crossover points. That way, if any of those wires get crushed, there is a layer of Kapton tape that's also in the way that will keep the wires from shorting. Temperature sensor gets glued in, and then the positive side of the battery gets its wire and that battery is pretty close to good to go so here is the ASI back 855 controller now we made the harness for this we use the L1019 connector for the motor and right now Samil is making the series connection for both batteries so the series connection you're having one battery plug into the other battery plug into the controller so you take the negative from one battery and the positive from the other battery and you're plugging them into the controller and then you're bridging the other two wires together so the positive of one battery feeds into the negative of the next battery and that's how you do a series connection here's a look at our 3d printed case and again back to the design so this battery if you may remember before it goes into that small gap right in front of the rear wheel and it bolts into the original kickstand area that the manufacturers did not use for their kickstand so we had this area that we were able to bolt into we made up a bracket and it ended up being a very stout connection and as you can see we made it a slot so that we had some room for error 
for where this was going to actually line up. So a nice big slot and then we used nylock nuts so that the bolts would not loosen. And our battery fits in there nice with just enough room for a charge port there in the little void. This battery ended up fitting perfectly into its place and we were able to bolt it right into that kickstand area uh, right in the middle of the frame. And here's a closer look to what that looked like. Now we're using just a uh, solid fill PLA. This is a UV resistant PLA made by filaments.ca and then one big Velcro strap to hold that battery in nice and tight. And it's actually held in there quite well. All right, guys, well, that is a look at the modifications that we did to this Troxus Lynx bike. To overview it, we swapped out the motor controller with an ASI Back855 controller. We added this 24 volt, 20 amp hour battery in the middle so that we were able to step it up to 72 volts. And then we added ATF and welded the clutch shot on the motor. So this was a super fun project. And let me tell you, riding this bike at 3000, uh, even 3500 watts compared to the stock, this is way, way, way more fun. It's almost almost too fast, uh, which is okay. I think we would probably want to upgrade the brakes a little bit better, but this regen thumb throttle really does help slow the bike down. This was super fun, uh, really, really cool project. And one really good thing I liked about the ASI controller was that we were able to maintain having a display and pedal assist and also front and rear light. They are a little bit expensive of a controller, uh, especially getting them wired up. Uh, is takes quite a bit of work, but really, really awesome performance coming out of it. But we're going to do a, another video on some ride uh, performance and probably upgrading this bike a little bit further. But really want to hear your feedback. What did you guys think? What do you think we could have done differently um, with this build? And yeah, just kind of want to hear uh, your thoughts and maybe uh, ideas on a future, future project. So for the controller wise, we are going to be exploring some different controller options in the near future, uh, specifically VESC, uh, Vetter, electronic speed controller uh, options, because those are open source and that uh, the VESC controllers work really, really well. But yeah, thank you guys so much for sticking around this long and checking out this video. Really want to uh, hear your feedback. And until next time, we'll see you soon. Keep it on two wheels. Oh, make sure to drop a comment because we are doing our subscriber giveaway probably in the upcoming video. So you definitely want to be involved in that. See you next time.